Thanks for staying with us. The state police are cracking down on speeders, distracted drivers, and non-belted occupants. Mr. Mills, why the increased interest to identify offenders? Well, I, it could be a, a couple of factors. One, they just increased the speed limit to 70. And I mean, I think people are going 90 miles an hour on the highway. I was going to say, you know, when you increase the speed limit to 70, you increase the speed that people travel to 80. Yeah. Because we all go 10 miles an hour over the speed limit because, well, not me, I'm always... No, you, you, you go nine, mine, mine, nine miles over the speed limit because the radar detector has to be accurate within five miles an hour and your speedometer needs to be accurate within five miles an hour. So, therefore... It could be you, 10 miles an hour off and you're still okay. That's nine why, miles an hour. Nine. Okay. Ten would be arguable. Now, okay. the reality of the matter, though, and I think there is an important piece here, right? So, we had, we were suffering from very slow speed limits for a long time because of fuel efficiencies and everything else, which really don't apply any longer. However, and I will tell you, because I commute a lot, nine out of ten times when you see somebody swerving over the lanes, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, it's not because they're intoxicated or anything else, it's because they're on their phone texting or something Absolutely. else. Absolutely. So, you know, to me, and I... And that even, is dangerous. Even a young version of me, I never understood why anybody would get in a vehicle and not put their seatbelt on. That, to me, is just stupid, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you're not endangering anybody but yourself at that point. But Maybe. to be texting, to be doing something that's illegal in a car or being distracted, I think is a danger to other people. And I think, right, rightfully so, the police should be enforcing those laws. The problem is that's a hard law to enforce, okay? Because, you know, for example, you're allowed to, you're allowed to uh, dial your phone, right? Is my understanding? Uh, actually, no. In Maryland, hands-free. Okay. So you got to have one of these smart watches. Meaning that if you have an integrated Bluetooth phone and you can do, use voice commands or anything else, then you can do that, but hands-free means you're not touching your phone with your At hands. all. At all. At all. Okay, I misunderstood that's a, that. That's then. also law too. Okay. Now the other piece, and I think you know, we have some very, very lax driving laws. For example, one thing that I really, really enjoyed about driving in Germany when I was there a couple of years ago, as well as states like Vermont, right, which also have published laws about passing, is people obey the law, meaning you pass on the left. And then you get back on the right. And you drive on the right. Right. You're not camped out in the left lane, which causes other people to try to pass you on the, on the right. Right. Because they're trying to go faster. Nobody, nobody gave you or crowned you the king of the road who sets this, the pace for everybody else. You're not the pace car. Right. So um, I think that there is more to this. I think that we should have better driver education and enforcement of the laws at all levels. But let me ask you this. We talk, they talk about distracted driving, and I get that. And there has been, at least in Washington County, and especially I, I'm on the Virginia Avenue area, in the Virginia Avenue area a good bit, and I see three or four spots where the police routinely hang out. Mm -hmm. And they don't have radar when you pass them by. They're just kind of looking, and I'm betting they're looking for somebody on a cell phone or whatever the case may be. But what about people that are sitting there eating their Big Mac in their car or their, or their Taco Bell or whatever the case may be? Well, and I think Isn't a, that distracted driving? That's a great point. That yeah. is very much distracted driving. Well, and you I get think, your sandwich and it falls in your lap. Right. And, and what you're going to do. What about hot coffee yeah. or something? Right. Or you got your sheet sub and your lettuce is yeah. falling out all over the place. Or the mayonnaise or everything else. I don't speak else. from experience, of course. Well, and, you know, the, the one benefit I think I draw from driving a stick shift is my right hand is always right. busy doing yeah. something or at least being ready to do something. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think, and, you know, I, I heard some studies a couple of years ago, which was that um, in other countries, there are no cup holders in a car. People don't equate drinking something while they're driving. They drive, when you get in the car, you drive. That's the only thing you do. You focus on driving, and that's it. Uh, here, I think, and it's a, it's a cultural thing, and I think there's a laxness in the laws and everything else, but we kind of take for granted, and it's probably driven by... Laziness. Well, <laughs> laziness in society as well. Yeah. Because to be honest, you know, and especially in the line of work that most of us are in, we're expected to be connected all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you have a two-hour drive, you can't not look at your email. You Absolutely. have to look at it because you're. And you have to be to on conference calls, and you right. have to be you have to be accessible. Well, and I'll tell you, great story. And I was in Baltimore a couple of weeks ago, and I got a call from one of my colleagues, and I was on coming back from Glen Burnie from the uh, 
from a Maryland agency in, in Glen Burnie, and I got in 695. I got on a call, was not paying attention. Next thing I knew, I took the harbor tunnel twice. Yeah. Once going north and once turned around and came back south because I missed the exit to not right. get onto harbor tunnel. Yep. Now, from a, from a safety perspective, one of the issues is that traffic deaths were up last year from, from 443 in 2014 to 520 in 2015. So, you know, that's a pretty significant increase in traffic deaths. And th the suggestion is that impaired driving, speeding, distracted driving, seat belts, um, and failing to use crosswalks, by the way, um, were the most common causes of those additional traffic fatalities. So, well, instead that, what happened today in weed sport? Yeah. To the 15 year old boy and the girl right. driving. I hadn't heard the details yet. Was she at fault or was the boy just spitting out the road? Yeah, I don't know, but he passed away. Yeah. I, I... And, you know, you know, people got to pay more attention to the road. Get off the cell phones, you know. And well, the reality of the matter is if you're in, a, in an urban area, even if the person, the pedestrian or the bike rider is at fault, mm -hmm. you have to pay double attention. Yeah. And you're driving through a neighborhood. You know, I've been in Weensport, and I mean people fly down those streets. Well, any street in America, really, and, and kids just don't give a hoot. And they press the metal to the pedal. I mean, go on. And, they're speed. and, you know, kids are playing in those neighborhoods. Our kids, our neighbors. And right. I work, because we, in our neighborhood, off, you know, Robin Wood Drive, people or kids are always out playing and riding bikes. And we have people speeding. They don't care. You see people on their cell phones. You know, it's, it's right. too late when it happens. And I think, uh, Jim, you get the last word on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Up next, cell phone tracking. Is there any time that it's okay for Big Brother to track you via your phone? Please stay with us.